your dying was a difficult enterprise. First, petty things took up your energies, the small but clustering duties of the sick, irritant as the cough's dry rhetoric, the hours waiting for pills, shot, x-ray, or test, while you read novels two a day, already with a kind of clumsy stealth distanced you from the habit of your health, in hope still, courteous still, but tired and thin. You tried to stay the man that you had been, treating each symptom as a mere mishap, without import. Then the spinal tap. That brought a hard headache, and when night came, I heard you wake up from the same bad dream every half hour, with the same short cry of mild outrage before immediately slipping into the nightmare once again, empty of content, but the drip of pain. No respite followed. The nightmare ceased. Your cough grew thick and rich. Its strength increased. Four nights. And on the fifth, we drove you down to the emergency room. That frown. That frown. I had never seen such rage in you before as when they wheeled you through the swinging door. You knew, rightly, they conveyed you from the normal pleasures of the sun's kingdom the hedonistic body basks within and takes for granted. Summer on the skin, sleep without break, the moderate taste of tea in a dry mouth. You went on for me as if your body sought out martyrdom in the far Canada of a hospital room. Once there, you entered fully the distress and long pale rigors of the wilderness. A gust of morphine took you. Back in sight, you breathed through a segmented tube, fat and white jammed down your throat so you could not speak. How thin the distance made you. In your cheek one day appeared the true shape of your bone, no longer padded. Still your mind alone explored that emptying and intermediate state for what holes and rests might be hidden in it. You wrote us messages on a pad, amused at one time when you had your nurse confused, who, seeing you reconciled after four years with your gray father, both of you in tears, asked if this was at last your special friend, the one you'd waited for until the end. She sings, you wrote, a Philippine folk song to wake me in the morning it is long and very pretty. Grabbing at detail to furnish that narrow ledge toured by the gale on which you lay, bed restful as a knife. You tried, tried hard to make of it a life thick with complicating circumstance your thoughts might latch onto. It had been chance always up till now, that filled in the moment with live specific, your hilarious comment discovered as it went along and fed the comic quick wherever it was led, you improvised upon your own delight. I think back to a scented summer night when we talked between our sleeping bags below a field of molten stars five years ago. I was so tickled by your mind's light touch, I couldn't sleep. You made me laugh too much, though I was tired and begged you to leave off. Now you were tired 
and yet not tired enough. Still hungry for the great world you were losing steadily at no season of your choosing. And when at last the whole death was assured, drugs having failed, and you had endured two weeks of an abominable constraint, you faced it equably, without complaint, unwhimpering but not at peace with it. You'd lived as if your time was infinite. You were not ready, not reconciled, feeling as uncompleted as a child till you had shown the world what you could do in some ambitious role yet to be worked through a role your need for it had half defined but never wholly, even in your mind. You lacked the necessary ruthlessness, the soaring meanness that pinpoints success. We loved that lack of self-love and your smile, rueful at your own silliness. Meanwhile, your lungs collapsed. The machine, unstrained, did all your breathing now. Nothing remained but death by drowning in an inland sea of your own fluids, which could, it seemed, be kindly forestalled with drugs. Both could and would. Nothing was said, everything understood, at least by us. Your own concerns were not long-term, precisely. When they gave the shot, you made local arrangements to the bed. You drew a pillow down around your head and slept and died your skin gone gray, achieving your completeness in a way. Outdoors next day, I was dizzy with the sense of having been ejected with some violence from vigil in a white and distant spot where I was numb into this garden plot, too close, too warm, and not enough like pain. I was delivered into time again, the variation that I live among, where your long body, too, used to belong, and where that still bush is minutely active. You never thought your body was attractive, though others did, and yet you trusted it. You must have loved its fickleness a bit, since it was yours, and it gave you what it could, till near the end, when it let you down for good. Its blood, hospitable to guests who took over, betraying it into the greatest of its inconsistencies. This difficult, tedious, painful enterprise.